everyone and welcome back for part two of Journey into Cellular Detoxification. I would love to present three of my dear friends and these experts as I like to call them. As we all journey deeper into our bodies and at times it can feel confusing, can feel overwhelming and can feel like you want to go searching for the answers outside of yourself with doctors, blood tests and you know, and all the answers on Google, which never really ends up feeling very good because it can feel really confusing and overwhelming. So we are all going to be coming together and really just sharing what's alive for us at the moment. Each of us are constantly on this unfolding journey of unraveling all of these, um, these energies and these toxins and belief systems and traumas and all of these different things that this beautiful intelligent body holds. So we're all on our own unique journeys. And of course it is a lifelong journey. And so each, um, each special lady is going to be sharing what is currently alive for them at the moment and what topic could support you. We're also gonna be sharing on success stories and you know, stories from our clients and you know, anything in which we felt like we went wrong. With, there really is no wrong, but there are always lessons to be learned. And, um, and realistically, we just want to share what we have learned along this path of, of really diving deep within ourselves so that you can feel not so alone on the journey and feel not so confused and overwhelmed because we all know it at times. It can feel, it can feel scary because we're diving into un and unraveling things that are just so profoundly deep, things that go far beyond this body and this lifetime alone, not only into past lifetimes, but ancestral stuff. And it's really, really deep. It can feel heavy at times. So we're all supporting you from afar. So Jody, I would love to invite you to speak first on our first topic, which is taking detox slowly and what can show up if we move too fast, if we push too hard. Um, so if you can, if you can dive into this topic with everyone, and then we can take it from there. Hi everybody, it's beautiful to be uh, back here with you and to be sharing our wisdom with you today because right now is such a challenging time and I'm currently guiding a group on Facebook, a detox group, and there's so many people, you know, more than ever that are wanting to start to take their health seriously and they're starting to realise there's so much more and what I'm finding is one of the common questions is I'm not feeling anything or I want, to, I want to be better now or I've only got two days to detox. And what I always say to people is if you want to detox your body, you need to take it slowly because if you go from eating a really like diet full of meat and gluten and sugar and high fat and then you jump into a juice detox, you were going to destroy your body. You're going to have acids and mucus and stuff going everywhere and it's going to hurt. It's going to be painful and you'll have bloating and skin breakouts, hair falling out. You can lose teeth and nails and all sorts of things happen. And I don't want to say that to scare you, but I say that to remind you that it's so important that we take it slowly because it's taken years and years and years to damage your body by eating these foods, the alcohol, or drugs, or meat, and it's gonna take years to filter that out. I know for me, I've been on this journey for eight years. Well, I did my first fast 15 years ago when I was very young, but when I really dove in was eight years ago, and I'm still going through so much, and this, every time I do a detox, more is coming out, and it really takes time, and we, we live in a toxic world, so, I really feel that this is just this is a lifestyle. It's not something you can do a, a two week juice detox and then go back to your diet. It, we need to continually be living this lifestyle and continually be filtering and detoxing and cleansing. Obviously, with transitional periods where we're rebuilding with minerals and things, but yeah, it's so important that we take it slowly and. I'd love to hear from you ladies if any of you have experiences within yourself where you've taken things maybe a little bit too fast or maybe with one of your clients where you've told them you've got to slow it down. You know, there is no rush. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll jump in with that. I mean, I feel like 
the first sort of two and a half years of my personal journey, I really went in super deep and and fast. But that's also because I was desperate to heal. I was bedridden and I just wanted to feel better. I just wanted to be out there playing with my kids and, you know, have a life. And so I really went super deep for such a long time. And I did have a lot of detox symptoms, um, including half of my hair falling out. Um, you know, and ultimately, it dep- I would say it depends on person to person. Sometimes what we need to do, like in my case, like I had to go all in. And I was okay to have all of these symptoms because I knew that it was part of the undoing. Whereas now that I'm well and I don't have any any obvious symptoms, you know, even though, of course, I'm still on a journey of undoing, but now I feel like, ah, I can take the luxury to just slow down and that that is beautiful in itself. And, And to really savor the journey and be in tune with my body. And, and a lot of people that start this lifestyle, they don't have major health issues. And so for those of you that don't have major health issues to resolve, I would say, go slow and enjoy the journey. And I feel a lot of times we want to go fast, which is, of course, you know, like it's this quick fix and immediate gratification thing. And that instead... There's t- like to really tune into the message, and that's been alive for me certainly for the last few years. There's time to do it right. Like we don't need to do it now. We don't need to lose all the weight now or get the full set of hair back now. Like there's time. We're on this journey, and to also realize, you know, it's the the journey is the beautiful part it's not so much the destination and then in some ways there isn't even a final destination and that is part of the old way of thinking this thing that you know you create the perfect self and then this perfect life begins instead of life is perfect in this moment yeah and it's perfectly imperfect you know like life is messy you know if we can just accept that if we can do a little bit of a paradigm switch up and say, we didn't just come here to be happy and to get it right and to be perfect and for it to be clean and neat. Instead, it's like, no, actually we chose to come here because of the challenge and because of the messiness of it all. And and that really is where the gems of beauty are in, in all of that, that mess and that chaos. And what I want to add to what you were saying, Jody, is that it's so often that all of us see it within ourselves and our clients where the ego, it sneaks in just like it has with so many other things with anyone who's suffered with binge eating or eating disorders or, you know, um, self-obsession or self-criticism or, on it, or any of these things. It really is that aspect of us that just feels unworthy. And it feels like, well, if I, if I'm perfect and if I, be this certain person in the world, then I'll be worthy of love and then everything will be okay. So I really want to say for everyone who's currently on the path of cleansing, healing, detoxing, watch that aspect of yourself because it can show up and it can take control of the path and it can push you into these ways of wanting to do it quickly, quickly. It has to happen now, it has to happen now. But if we can just recognize that aspect of ourself and send it more love, give it more love, not less, not shun it, not be like, why is that here? But instead just send the part of us that feels so deeply unworthy or so deeply dirty or, you know, this dirty, filthy colon, this broken nervous system, these unhealed adrenals, these weak kidneys, you know, all of these ideas that we concoct along the healing journey as we do iridology and we start to understand our body a little bit more. And instead just seeing the body is completely perfect in this moment and that it's actually okay the way it is and um and making peace with that then allows this journey as Alex was just saying to unfold and rather than it needing to happen right now it's more so just like okay if I give myself all the time and this is really what would you say girls this feels like the ultimate um the what's it called 
to, to switch from this really egoic, it has to happen now. The opposite of that would be, I've got my whole life. This is a lifelong journey. I can literally sit back and just take it day by day. None of this needs to be forced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely um, resonate with that. The, um, the whole concept, you know, of shifting this lifestyle, shifting to this lifestyle, like Arnold Eric, for instance, he highlights the importance of the transition diet so much because this concept of you go from a standard American diet to maybe there are a lot of people who want to be fruitarian. You know, the, another thing the ego has in this, in this kind of context is the idea of labels. People want to be vegan. They want to be fruitarian. They want to have this accolade, I suppose, that comes from telling people, I am a certain thing, as if that thing is a final version of you, as if now that you're vegan, everything's great. Now that you're fruitarian, everything's great. Now that I'm a breatharian, everything's great. And it's all a work in progress, constantly an unfolding. And then this whole concept, you know, of going from, let's say, a standard American diet to a largely raw, whole foods, plant-based diet, it involves a huge shift in consciousness. You don't just go from being the person who's eating burgers and steaks and popcorn to the person who's really nourishing their body in a very loving way. It involves a serious shift in consciousness and an identity. In, in, you, know, you, you view yourself very differently by the time you walked the path and made it to the person who's largely eating fruits and salads, basically. And the whole concept of the transition diet is to keep people on track, to know that it's okay to keep going on the journey rather than looking and suddenly going, I have to be there. I have to be at the top of the mountain. Instead, understanding actually it's by walking the sides of the mountain that you understand the contours of the mountain and you will reach the top effortlessly. It can be effortless, this path. The slower you go, the more gently you go, the more effortless it is and can become. Obviously, there are times when it's necessary to go really deep, to go on just fruits or to go on a liquid diet because the body is really backed up or a various organ or gland is really, really asking for some healing. And then, you know, you have to listen to the body. But the problem is we more often listen to the mind rather than the body. And the body is happy with things going gradually and gently because it's the least stressful approach. Anything we do that's a shock to the body the body will, will retract, will contract, it will create a duality. So really the slower we can go, the more we are in the multidimensionality, the more we are in the kind of oneness. And if you think about it, let's say you're trying to observe a picture or a beautiful statue, it's all about the awareness that you can give to that object, to reality, to whatever's happening. The slower you go, the, if you're just sitting still in front of the picture, which is the ultimate slowness, you can take as much detail as possible. So there's a huge opportunity for awareness in the stillness and in the slowing down. Whereas the faster we go, if you're just speeding past on a motorbike and you see the painting on the side of the road, you might have a quick glimpse of it, but that's it, it's gone. The opportunity for awareness is very slim. And that bringing of slowness into everything, it kind of brings with it this, it's almost as if slowness itself is the healing. It's like, can you love yourself to go slowly? Can you love yourself to be gentle? Obviously, if you need to take other action, that's okay. But it's all about this, uh, the self-love piece, because it's not easy to slow things down. Often in love, you know, we fall in love, we meet someone, we're infatuated, and we know that it's probably healthier that we maybe take some time for ourselves and maybe only see them, you know, this certain amount of times per day or whatever. But we end up, we want it all and we want it now. And in the end, we can sabotage by going too fast too soon and I think you know a lot of these people lately youtubers famous influencers who used to be vegan or used to be plant-based or used to be raw or all these various things and now they kind of fall off the wagon or they've turned onto a carnivore lifestyle or whatever invariably if you look at the histories and the backgrounds of these individuals they never transitioned properly and they largely grew very big followings because people were like wow you went from this to this overnight you know, the, the, there is no transition and it's a very quick fix and people are unconsciously very drawn to that. And the message really is that there is, there is no quick fix and it's a change of consciousness that needs to take place. Not just a change of, oh, I'll add this exercise routine or I'll remove this macronutrient. It's, it's really a very much a spiritual journey, right? That's what it's about.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, that's a really important piece. A, the healing is in the slowing down. You know, if we can all get that in, in the world we're living in, it's very stimulated, it's very fast paced. So the healing, it's not just about the, the juice cleanse. It's not, it's not about the food. It's like, it's literally becoming so slow, so embodied, landing into the body. And that will be a very new experience for many people who have been living up in their head and out of their body because all of the trauma and all of the emotions and everything has been too much. So you've kind of almost been hijacked and you've disconnected and you've been living up in the thoughts. So just landing in the body and just slowing down, you know, this is a piece I feel like I want to jump in and share it on now, which is really what I'm being schooled in in a whole new level, which is firstly, when we're slowing down, we're focusing on what? We're focusing on the adrenals and the nervous system. And there is really nothing else that we would begin and focus very, very adamantly on if we want to not only up-level our physical body, but completely change and metamorphose this entire experience we're having here on planet Earth. So the nervous system, you know, until it's, it's, it's funny, we always, as Alice says, we're always, we're looking for the quick fix. We want to know what the supplement is. We want to know, oh, I can take this and I can just do this. And that's going to only be one thing of this, and then it's going to be done. But that's just not how life operates. You know, as many years as it took to create this in your body, it's going to be unraveling for that many years. I think a lot of people don't want to accept that, but it is true. And so with the nervous system, it's like, yes, okay, there's the CBD oil, there's the medicinal mushrooms, um, and I'll, I'll hand it over in case anyone else has some other things they want to add to that. But what I'm really understanding very deeply is that the nervous system, it's a complete energetic thing. You know, it's like really working into the nervous system, really working into the glandular system, which is the endocrine system, which is relevant for a lot of my viewers with polycystic ovarian syndrome or hormonal imbalance. Um, working into these two core systems is going to require a very, very slow tentative energy of reparenting oneself and tending to your every need and slowing down and listening and asking yourself what is it I need in this moment or noticing when the heart has started beating faster and you're scrolling social media or you're just rushing about the nervous system healing piece is literally about completely slowing down and adhering to and devoting yourself to a slower paced reality and, um, and that's going to be challenging for people who want to remain on coffee and want to remain like, you know, jacked up and this and that. But eventually you'll get to a point that we all got to, which is, well, I don't actually have a fucking choice, do I? I'm going to have to slow down. Otherwise, my body is not actually going to make it in this like stimulated way of living in this um this ego this ego that wants to wants to believe that it's this person in the world and showing up in this way and rah, rah, rah. it's a very humbling experience and I'm yet again being humbled into another layer of my own healing more so energetic than anything and inner child stuff of just slowing down and being so incredibly present to the moment and listening to the body so in saying that I would love to throw it out there nervous system it's a very there's a little gecko in the background Alice God, I miss living in Thailand and Bali. Um, so if anyone else has some pieces they want to add to that, because obviously the nervous system is a huge one. Alex is unmuted. So I'm guessing you've got something beautiful. Yeah, in that regards, I wanna I wanna mention a beautiful quote which goes something like, in our deepest dysfunctionality lies the door to the kingdom of heaven. So in our deepest dysfunctionality, meaning in everything that we believe is wrong about us, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, therein lies the door to the kingdom of heaven. And I find that is such a powerful quote to remember. We should write it out and put it on our bathroom um mirror because that is really the core of what we're talking about here in fact that is the core of all of our teachings 
right? When we see that by rightful living, by rightful eating, by being mindful, we simply bring to the surface everything that is dysfunctional, that is out of harmony, so that it can be healed. So when we detox, you know, and what we perceive is like, oh my God, I'm getting worse. No, you're not getting worse. You are bringing to the surface what has been lying dormant and what would eventually erupt violently as cancer or, you know, whatever it is, like these, all of a sudden, it's like out of the blue, I got sick. Didn't happen out of the blue. Out of the blue, I had a panic attack. Out of the blue, my husband left. Like nothing happens out of the blue. Everything is present. It's just that we suppress, we suppress. And our lifestyle really is all about suppressing nothing. And the nervous system, that is what's healing to the nervous system when everything is allowed. Because life is a constant, it, it's, it's like the waves, you know, the waves, they keep on coming. But when we are allowed to express and to feel, and as I'm speaking, what's really becoming more and more apparent is it's our judgment that is what's so painful and what causes the dis-ease and prevents us from healing. Because when we stop the judgment, like when we stop judging, oh, I'm getting worse. No, that's a judgment. That's an idea. That's a story. If I accept and love and trust in the benevolent universe, in the benevolent body, then I don't have to ever be in fear. But this, of course, that's the path that we are on. And in some ways, you know, we all here, we've been on this path long enough to now really go, okay, I can trust this more and more and more. And the bliss is the trust. The bliss is the fact that like, I don't have any more questions. I know that this is right. Yeah. And I just want to add to that is that, is that the nervous system and the subconscious mind, which is a very important part of this, and all of life, it's one interconnected field of energy, intelligent, vastly intelligent energy. So the saying, I've got a little fluff ball on my lip, the saying that you will never be given more than you can handle is such a simple way of saying you literally, it's all such an intelligent play of energy. It's beyond what we could ever fathom. So the subconscious mind being the vast majority of the thinking, the, the behavioral decision-making and all of this 95% for the average human, that's like a database of so much data, so much memory, all of the belief systems, the thoughts, the childhood stuff. And along this healing journey, it can sometimes feel like, oh, I'm getting worse, I'm going backwards. No, you have just been presented with and revealed another layer of the healing that's been back there, but it's been hidden. It's been, um, it's been masked because it was too much for your nervous system holding at that time. So for instance, someone who was, you know, molested or sexually abused as a child, you know, for many beings that will go suppressed for several years um, until into their adult life. And then at the point in time where it's, it's ready to come up and be pulled into the light of awareness for healing, it'll come up. And that's an extreme example, but that's happening at all moments. It's like every single emotional process that comes up, we should be bowing to it and honoring it, knowing that it's another sacred divine message of our own healing and nothing has gone wrong. You haven't made any kind of mistake. You haven't gone backwards you know, it's just this, it's this spiraling effect. And um, Alice is going to be speaking to that in a little while. Jody. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on my experience with the nervous system. Um, I refused to believe for so long that the nervous system really could impact our body as much as it could. And by that, I mean our emotions and our thoughts. And 
I, I had so many people say, you know, how's your stress? And I'm like, oh, I don't have any stress. And I'm really calm because so you know, every different practitioner I went to, they'd all bring it in. But I just, for some reason, my, I just couldn't receive the information. I couldn't believe that it had anything to do with it. So I did every single diet. I tried every different form of meditation and everything. And it was through that path that I got the greatest results, not the diets, not the, the way that I was eating. Because even on the detox journey, I got so far and I had really good blood tests and everything. I'm like, why am I still getting psoriasis on my head? And why am I still feeling tired? You know, what, what is the missing link? And it hasn't been until I've really started to explore the emotional stuff and calming my nervous system and slowing down which was so hard I held on I held on for dear life I really did not want to let that part go and when I did it it was incredible and yeah I just wanted to share my experience with that and for all my clients as well I see the same thing they just they just refuse to see this piece and really it's so simple if we just slow down and calm and have a daily practice everything shifts Mm. thank you for that piece Alice I'd love to pass over to you Uh, we were speaking surrender the path is not linear I should have healed by now all of these thoughts (laughs) and something which I think we all you know all could take more of which is becoming the beginner which is you know just being humbled by life and just being this is the phase of life I'm in right now it's like the newborn baby that's like what's going on like I'm learning everything for the first time but there's something so beautiful and heart opening about that experience so you want to speak to this topic absolutely yeah thank you um I wanted to add before I crack on uh Jodie what you shared about the sort of resistance or reluctance that you've noticed in clients and accepting this other piece you know and also your own kind of resistance to it and it's because we know we're so deeply conditioned to think of the body in terms of newtonian physics you know like mass and velocity and weight and it's all kind of mathematics and calories in equals energy out and the body doesn't work like that It's it's a really complex system and because of this you know obsession with sort of the the scientism and matter we really doubt anything that is energy based anything that we cannot touch anything that is intangible it's like no that's not real because we're so deeply cynical and this comes from a very collective wound that we all carry around fear and around trust and around knowing who we are and like this journey is such an amazing process of this basically unraveling before our eyes like we find out literally who we are by going into ourselves by stopping you know by by always taking in energies from the outside whether it's I don't know toxic media toxic relationships toxic food toxic lifestyle it's all like coming in you know and we're like a sponge and we're just absorbing it and it's the central nervous system basically the shock absorber you know Whereas when we start this lifestyle and we, we make like a 180 degree shift to instead of like everything coming from the outside and we're just sponges, it's realizing, okay, I'm generating my own energy. Like within me lies a multidimensional, expansive, eternal universe. You know, there are more neural connections in the brain than there are stars in the entire universe. And each one, basically, each human being is kind of its own walking universe of complexity and many things are happening here energetically. And yet we're looking at reality with such a small lens and we think this is it. And a lot of the process of healing is just understanding that there is a much bigger piece at play. There's a much bigger, in, in, in Sanskrit, in the Vedas, it's called Leela. You know, it's kind of this whole karmic beautiful perfect energetic playground is here for us to learn and evolve in and the more embodied we are the more present we are to what's happening to reality as it is the more active participants we can be in this amazing playground and then you can literally start creating your body as you want it your life as you want it and you gain and gather more and more power as you continue to sort of emit you know from the from the inside out and it's an expression, like an, a clean, authentic expression of this beautiful, powerful energy that we all contain within us. 
But the problem is when we're so obstructed on a physical level with toxins and acidity, on an emotional level with, you know, the endocrine system being super out of balance with various childhood wounding and traumas and belief systems and all of this various brainwashing and various patterns that we've picked up from TV and other people. And it's like, wow, there's this whole web basically of, of heaviness that's preventing this authentic expression coming out and blessing the world with its grace. So this journey, this lifestyle of cellular detoxification is about slowly de-armoring ourselves, slowly taking off every single bit of the, the shield around the heart, the, the big cut, you know, constricting thing around the neck that starts us from expressing and just slowly, slowly removing these these obstructions, these impurities. In yoga, they're known as impurities. And the more we practice yoga as a lifestyle, and this is a yogic path, essentially what we're doing here, the more we can shine as our true authentic selves. And the more, you know, this cyclical process of removing, removing the, the, um, the impurities, which happen on all levels energetically, it's all to do with awareness. And sometimes we simply don't have the awareness to hook into a particular wound or to hook into a particular past memory. We haven't quite yet had the experience that maybe brings to fruition the understanding, oh, because of this and this and this. And suddenly out it pops a sanskara and, you know, an imprint. And in that moment, we can choose to sit with it and we can choose to be with it and learn from it and love it and let it come up through our body. And then it's gone. Or we can fight it. We can suddenly be like, I feel anxious. I must go on Instagram. And I read this thing nowadays. Kids are so prone to distraction that they need to have like one thing in the background, like music or TV, and then two screens. They're playing between a phone and a tablet or a laptop. And they're basically like, whilst YouTube is on, they're also scrolling through the phone and there's also a third device. That's how scatty the latest kind of generation is. And it's slowing down and coming back because without awareness, we don't know what it is that we're healing. And we have all of these situations in life, these karmic circumstances that happen exactly perfectly for our own healing. And it's coming out of the victim mode where we go, why is this happening to me? Why has he left? Why am I in pain? And just, you know, why is life so hard? And coming out of that and instead rising into the strength of I'm expressing what is authentic. I'm daily working on shedding these blockages and these impurities and then also having the understanding of okay this energy is out there and at the moment in the world there are some intense energies and there are energies in the sky and every person has energies in their own relationship dynamics and there are obviously the society with its own energy and it's kind of learning how to create a bubble of safety around yourself where you're just in your own empowered space and you're not so easily influenced by this craving or that desire for this external sensory pleasure and this you know the central nervous system is wired for safety so we think we want the ferrari because we think on some level it equals safety but it doesn't it creates a lot of stress for us to have unmet desires that are highly unrealistic for a lot of people and then we end up in this kind of fantasy world so you know so much of the healing is always about coming back to the reality of the body and the present moment and this authentic expression not being expressed by the external. Thank you, so beautiful. Yeah, so much to take from that. And does anyone else have anything they wanna add before I go on, Jodie or Alex? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and, and something that I want to address is um, it's this coming back to understanding that there are going to be moments where things feel intense and a lot of pain or a lot of emotion is coming up because, as we've mentioned, this path is just literally the opposite of suppression, you know, and we can call, we don't even have to call this the detox path. It's all the same thing. It's the spiritual path. It's the path of awakening. It's, it's literally unveiling everything that's ever been tucked away and shoved into a nook or cranny and being like, oh, I'm not going to go there. And instead just saying, I give you full permission to be here. You are welcome. You are loved. You are safe. 
and allowing this integration to take place within our own soul and all of these different energy bodies and this multi-dimensional complex version of what we are. And it's allowing all of these little fragmented pieces to come back together and to integrate and to heal, you know. And in some ways, I don't even really resonate with the word healing because it implies that something's broken. But it's really just the path we've come here to walk, to uh, to allow all of these samskaras, these traumas, these very intense pains that can really make you it's very convincing it can make you feel like you're a victim and then to shift out of that victim consciousness which is a very very limited victim consciousness it's just a it's an illusion it's nothing more than illusion it's something in this moment thinking that you're this this weak this weak individual separated being and that you're not connected to the uh, infinite quantum field and that person over there can hurt you and he's a dick and rah, rah, rah. But realistically, it's like that over there, you're just pointing to more of you, more of the quantum field that's just here in this intelligent way, mirroring back to you so that you can call another piece of yourself into integration and healing. So I really want to say that it can feel intense at times. And, you know, I've been on this journey for some time and I've been with a lot of emotions lately. And at times it feels so intense. I notice this victim mentality shows up of like, this is too much. Like, why am I given this much? Why can't I just chill for a year and not be in all of these emotional processes? And in that, just reawakening for me, it like shifted from like, oh, like victim, blah, 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 in hot yoga and all of this stuff is coming up this morning and then having a shower afterwards and just, pissing myself laughing, just laughing. Like if someone had heard me in my shout, they'd be like, what's going on in there? And it was just reawakening this cosmic joke of like, we can think and feel and be so convinced that we're a victim, this poor innocent being and all this pain and suffering is happening to me. But really it's like, it's all by design. It's all an intelligent creation. And it's exactly what we want to be experiencing on and on a higher level you are loving every single part of your journey, the highs, but especially the lows as well. And it won't feel like it. When you're in the lows, there'll be, there can be a lot of resistance. There can be friction. There can be judgment. This shouldn't be here. This isn't okay. But when you really surrender into those processes and die into them, literally allow more layers of yourself, your false self to just die and fall away and burn to ash, then what happens is this new uh, this this new thread of life force starts coming through that's just infused with pure love and light, and then when we actually shift through that challenging period, we look back on it and think, oh, that was actually so beautiful. There's something so melancholic and beautiful about that deep depression I was in. So if anyone's there right now, I know we're all on very unique paths, but a lot of people are really in it right now. There's a lot of collective healing that's taking place. So if you're really in it, just remember that this too will always pass. It will always pass. And, and allowing yourself to completely surrender and die into every single moment and allow these new layers of beautiful, majestic vulnerability to rise up you know, like that is the path. That's why you're here. So don't resist that process. And I'm, I'm sharing the medicine that I need to receive myself. This is all a, ultimately we always share on what it is that we need. We share that the medicine that comes through any of us is our medicine and like, oh, this is what I'm learning. This is what I'm integrating. How can I help you with this? So coming back, I want to pass over to Alex on something we were sharing about. Um, she has been having a lot of clients sending her blood work and sending her test results, which has just been really exciting. And it always is when you get this kind of thing, you know, for me, when women haven't had their period in years and they get their period or they haven't been able to conceive a child and suddenly they're pregnant. And it's always this very affirming thing of like, oh my goodness, like it works, this path works. Um, so Alex is going to speak to uh, clients, um, blood work, and also how this a path can initially make it feel as though things are getting worse, but this isn't the case, and we've already kind of addressed that. Um, and she will be speaking to why this ultimately is not a quick fix and why we really have to shift out of that paradigm. 
Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, so recently, I mean, it's probably like in the last nine months, I've been slowly, you know, accumulating more and more clients, sending me information about their blood work, about their dentist appointments, about pregnancies. And, and it's been amazing because in some ways, you know, I started this, I started the teaching journey sort of three years ago, coaching and teaching. And initially there was a lot of apprehension on my side, like, you know, everything that we do here is really against all grains, uh, even the most holistic. And so there were times when clients would come to me and say, oh, but you know, I'm getting worse over here, where I couldn't in full confidence stand and go, go ahead. And, and now in the last nine months, I've really been getting this momentum of going, wow, like, what we are doing here, not just on my own body, but on now many other bodies. And it took this long. It took two, three years of working with clients to get to the point where now I can say, this works for every body. Because here's the other thing. A lot of people on this path can think, oh, well, maybe this doesn't work for my body. You know, it can work for your body, but not for my body. And my message is, no, actually, this does work for every body, but it may not work for every mind, not for every state of consciousness. So the body is like, that's the easy part. It works. But does it work for your level of consciousness? Does it work for your level of readiness to deal with the real hard truth of reality? And I can speak to this myself. I, in my gene keys, I have three gene keys that are very prominent in the shadow of fantasy. So do I love fantasy and illusion? I do. And I used to make stories and create, I, I mean, I lived in fantasy my whole life as an escapism from my trauma. And ultimately my biggest lesson has been coming to, and I think that's what whole, what healing to me, what healing means is coming to wholeness, coming to see reality for what it is. And it's seeing reality as the full spectrum, seeing that, yes, dis-ease is part of reality. It's part of everybody's life. And instead of running from it with biohacking and fixing, it's like, embrace this ease i used to be such a hypochondriac i no longer fear any disease and i can truly honestly say that like bring it whatever needs to come my way i know that there's going to be enormous gifts in it and that every single healing journey just potentiates my power it's like a badge you know and, and i'm not saying i need more dis-ease but if it's part of my life journey i'm ready and if we can have that perception around disease how free can we be i know it's freed me up enormously to not fear any level of disease like wow because i used to spend a lot of time in fear and similarly knowing that every single dysfunction that arises out of this me being on this journey, any pattern, any trauma, instead of fearing it and going like, oh, not again, it's like, wow, okay, another layer of healing, bring it. And yes, do I always like it? Of course not. But ultimately, being healed means being in the awareness that every single layer of trauma that we get to work through becomes part of my gift, part of my power. So when we see reality as that, and we really see the whole of reality, that darkness, if we're experiencing darkness, wow, it's really dark. There must be enormous light waiting for me on the other side. And equally true is I know that when I experience these moments of utter expansion and bliss, sometimes to the point where I go, oh my God, I'm going to explode into a million fragments because I can't handle so much bliss. I equally know 
as much as I don't like it, the other side of the wave is flipping coming. And I can cower and go hang on a bit, or I can go bring it on. And, and, I, and that's in some ways the point where I feel like I'm at, where I'm in that void, the constant void of when there's bliss and expansion coming, like I have nowhere to go but there. And when there's death and destruction going on, I have nowhere to go but there. And it's just, you know, and that I feel is for me personally, like knowing I am whole because there is no more separation. There's no more judgment of any piece of myself or life itself. Oops, forgot how to unmute myself. Um, yeah, and I can totally, Jodes, I'm gonna mute you um, for now. Um, I can totally relate to this and I, I shared on my Instagram was you all know yesterday I went to I went to go get some tests done this year living back in the Western country I figured I'll play by uh, society standards I'm going to go to the dentist after nearly four years of not seeing a dentist and um, being fruit based most of those years and so that was step number one it brought up a lot of anxiety it brought up a lot of anxiety because I had this insecurity in my head like because I grew up with so many cavities Every time I went to the dentist from when I was a little girl, there were at least three more cavities that needed to be filled. And that was a diet on dairy and cereal and, you know, muesli bars and all these kinds of things. And then I fed this same indoctrine of, well, all sugar is equal. And that if you're eating, you know, like sometimes I eat like 30 dates, I'm not going to lie. Like there's, there's a lot of sugar in my diet. My diet is pretty much mostly sugar. So of course there were these feelings of like, oh shit, I don't want to go to the dentist. And so I went and this was earlier this year and she's like, your teeth are fantastic. Do you use an electric toothbrush? And she was all excited and not a single new cavity. And, um, and it was just like such a, whew, it was just amazing. And then yesterday I was, I was very nervous to get my test results back. And actually it brought a lot of fear and trauma back because when I was so sick in Manhattan, I was seeing so many doctors, dermatologists, endocrinologists, specialists, and it was just so dark. It was so scary. It was one thing after the next. It was like, first of all, the cervical cancer cells, then it was the PCOS, and then it was endometriosis. And then it was a screening for autoimmune and lupus in which I came back um, that like there were these speckles when it's like, it's hard to find autoimmune but there are these speckles within the blood test and it all came back and so I'm literally like this is when I was suicidal in Manhattan I'm like what's the point like this body is just going to fail me I don't trust this body so there were these nerves yesterday of getting all of these tests of not only nutrient not only thyroid iron b12 being vegan and mostly fruitarian but there was this thing of like do I have lupus like I had to really go into that death of like well what if I do have something really serious even though I don't feel it it's like the mind going into this story so it was this like surrendering again into like bring it on like I'm not afraid of this I'm not going to buy into this indoctrination from society and doctors this sterile world where you walk into a doctor's office and everything is so systematic and it feels so devoid of mama earth and green and life force it's just it's so synthetic and it's scary it's terrifying and it's traumatic especially when you're getting lab results telling you that all these things are wrong so I was like bring it on like whatever that test is going to say it's going to be okay it's just going to be a new life cycle for you for us you know for me and all of these other selves in here <laughs> for us to explore and play and um, yeah, like everything was perfect. Everything was perfect in the test. And even this, um, my white blood cell count, which is always so low, had risen slightly. It doesn't go up too much. It's still low, but it, some, that's normal for some people. And then the autoimmune screenings were totally normal, like none of this speckling stuff. So I share this of this, you know, this path that we're all on. It is cutting edge. It is edgy, you know, to be dry fasting, to be, you know, eating a ton of fruit, 
to be saying, actually, we don't even need protein. You know, like that whole thing has been a myth within itself. For most of us, I think all of us here probably haven't drunk water for over two years, I would say, at least. Uh, so it's an edgy path, don't get me wrong. Whenever we, like, whenever I go to see a naturopath or, you know, a col colonic hydrotherapist, they're like, how many glasses of water are you drinking a day? I'm like, uh, well, it's going to be hard to explain this. Like, it's, a, it's definitely an out there path. But with commitment and trust and the right application and, you know, as Alex was saying, it's like it is really, it's a mind game. The body's just doing its thing. We just have to come back to earth. We have to come back to simplicity. We've got to get the junk out of the trunk. The rest of it is a mental game. It is a consciousness. It's an expansion. And we can trust. We can trust. And we are the living proof of that. So does anyone have anything they want to add? I just wanted to. Oh, sorry, Jody. You, you go, Alex. I just wanted to to add because I kind of went off a bit of a tangent, but I wanted to add, um, you know, sort of like the the solid information that I've been getting, and I tend to ignore it because for me it's like, of course, like I know that part, but it's important for the listeners, you know, to hear about women who had lifelong iron issues. I had a woman with lifelong iron issues. And no matter what she did, and she traveled to specialists to get her iron sorted out, and it just didn't happen. Only three and a half months on this lifestyle, and she didn't even go so far, because in three and a half months, we know you can't go so far, iron out, sorted out like that. Her doctors in Italy were like, we cannot understand how this is possible, you know? And I mean, sometimes I do feel like, oops, because we're defying doctors. And I kind of go like, I mean, I don't know 95% of the information that doctors can speak about, right? Because they can speak over our heads very quickly. And I have to pledge ignorance. But I do know how to heal a body. Because, and we, you know, because we've done it. And, and another example, a pregnant lady, I hope you can't hear the, the lawnmower, you got a lawnmower in, in the background. Anyway, um, a pregnant lady who was with me for, I think about two years on a journey, she felt, so she's done deep cleansing, then fell pregnant. And throughout the pregnancy, there were doctors and midwives so worried about her diet, including her family, of course. And yet she had absolutely the most beautiful, brilliant pregnancy, minimal weight gain, radiant energy up until, you know, the very last bit, um, super easy birth. And now her baby's four months old and she's still eating this way and she's got enough milk supply. The baby is like super chilled, no issues. So it's really the proof is in the pudding. I mean, she had blood tests done as well, but just in the way she feels. And so that for me is always, you know, the, the, the proof is, well, trust how you feel. And then sure, at some point, go and do the blood test. Another example is, um, and this is several times where I had people do blood tests kind of like a year into their process and the blood tests were worse. So it really depends on your starting point, but it can be that the blood tests get worse and then they get worried. But after a certain time, depending on your nervous system, how much emotional work you're doing. So it is, it is complex. So that's where we're back to. This is an art form rather than a science. But then there comes a threshold point where all of a sudden everything starts to just click together. The improvements come. The internal alignment comes. And then it's like, wow, blood test, my life, like everything is sorting it's, itself out. I just wanted to share that sort of like as more tangible information. Mm, yeah, thank you for sharing that, Alex. I, uh, I wanted to share my experience, actually. So I spent two years of my life where I had to go to hospital three times a week. And every time I went in there, I was having UVB treatments to help my skin, having baths, and they'd give me medicine that I needed to take. And 
every time I would go in, I'd be like, you know, I've been reading this article online and it told me if I eat this, it would make a difference. And they're like, no, 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 there's nothing you can do. This is, this is going to be your life, most likely for the rest of your life. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I'd go back and read some more. And then one day, eventually, I said, I'm not coming anymore. I'm done with this. I've decided to completely change my life. I'm going to chase the sun because I needed sun for my skin because whenever I was in the sun, it would help it. And I'm going to try a different way. I'm not taking anything. I'm not having any more treatments and I'm going to take this route. And they said, we really don't advise you to do that. And they made me sign these forms because people that have severe skin disorders uh, have to sign forms to say that they're not suicidal because the rates of suicide are so much higher. And they let me, they let me go. And then a year later, after I'd pretty much healed myself 100%, living a completely different lifestyle, I went back for a checkup and they could not believe what I had done. They said, oh, that's a miracle. How's that possible? And I said, well, this is what I've done. And I really feel this should be brought into the system. Like, I feel we can help so many people that are suffering. I looked around in the, in the hospital waiting room with people with lesions all over their bodies and itching and just looking so depressed. And it was at that moment that I knew that I had to share what I was doing. But I guess what Alex was talking about was the light and the dark. Like having all of that happen to me it changed my entire life by going to that deep, dark place. I now live a nomadic lifestyle where I'm chasing the sun and I live in places with fresh fruit and abundance and I do nothing but nourish my body. So if you are in that state now where you're suffering and you're going through something, just know that it's all happening for a reason. And when you go into that, on the other side, you're going to be rewarded. And listen to yourself because you know what's best. If you feel like there is another way, believe that. Don't listen to what someone's telling you that they're, they've been programmed or they've been educated in a way that they just don't know any different, that there is another way. Yeah, and it's all happening for us, not to us. You know, that, that, just that paradigm shift, that alone will change so much because... It's, it's all far too intelligent, this entire reality. It's far too intelligent for you to, I think so, so many of us, all of us, we've all got the abandonment wound. God has abandoned me. As soon as we split into duality, it's like we've all got that wound of God is, is, has forgotten about me. I'm the forgotten one, you know, and something bad's going to happen to me. And, and this is where that victim consciousness comes from. So to just switch that simple paradigm over to it's all happening for me it's not happening to me and then you will see that every single little chaotic moment or destructive thing that's taking place no matter how painful it has been at the time it has served your evolution in so many ways even if it's just to crack open your heart in a deeper state of vulnerability or whether it's to completely reroot you which is usually what the healing journey is it's like the body shows all of these symptoms and every symptom is, I believe, very, very deeply connected with one soul karma and blueprint because every symptom is going to hold a certain level of fear. It's going to be a mirror. It's going to be a reflection of something. So for instance, a lot of women losing their hair or a lot of women I work with with hirsutism, which is growing dark, coarse hair on the body, on the face, chin and the body, you know, like these symptoms showing up because there's something so deeply ingrained and rooted in that symptom that's going to ignite the perfect cocktail of fear because it's going to help you work through layers of something that your soul has come here to face. It wants to look at this. It wants to feel these things, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. So yeah, anyone else got anything they want to add? Thanks for that, Sarah. And guys, generally, that was beautiful. I love sitting here and just thinking, wow, these women are incredible. And they're my family, you know, they're my tribe. It's so blessed. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to add was a piece about like nature and coming back always to nature and to this wisdom of this incredibly complex system that we live in, that far you know, outweighs anything that we have in terms of our current scientific understanding. You know, we can't recreate a human eye, for instance. Like, it's, it's incredibly intelligent. And 
in many ways, you know, a lot of these things that come through the mind, like trying to speed up uh, and rush detoxification or wanting to instantly be healed of a disease overnight or whatever. And, you know, the, the more we come back to nature, the more we find out that we almost... You almost can't rush things when you do them in a truly natural way. For instance, if you're going to, to dry fast, which is, a, you know, in a way the most natural diet because you're not doing the most natural fast even because you're not doing anything. It's like a pure fast. You just stop everything altogether. Just stop and be in the stillness. And you basically cannot dry fast for any longer than your body physically at that moment. And energetically, obviously, the physical is a reflection of the energy allows you to fast for some people they may be so acidic or so backed up like they can only fast for 12 hours dry fast for 12 hours before they start to get very intense detox symptoms like headaches like dizziness like extreme emotions or extreme thirst or a lot of fear and anxiety and panic and often when people fast a lot of fear comes up and particularly this happens in dry fasting because in dry fasting it's almost as if everything is magnified everything is sped up so people can sometimes maybe 18 or 24 hours into a dry fast suddenly have intense fears come up. And usually these fears are based around safety. So it's kind of the, the, the four archetypes of, archetypes of survival come in, which are basically the, the victim, the prostitute, um, the saboteur, and the child, which often is a wounded inner child. And these come up and we can get very caught up in these patterns and these four archetypes of survival have different stories that they tell us, whether it's, you can't do it on your own or your safety is in, you know, you're not safe. You need to, you need to stop this or, you know, all these various ways that we basically stop our progress and self-sabotage ourselves because of this fear, because of this survival fear that comes up. And really these are signs, like whenever things get too intense in terms of a detox symptom, whether it's emotional or physical, it's a sign that nature is telling you, okay, for you, for where you're at now, stop. You know, if the detox symptoms are too intense, stop, don't push nature. Nature always shows you, this is where you're at. Embrace the journey, embrace where you're at. And it's the same with fruit, for instance. Let's say you decide from now on, if I feel like binging, and I have, I come from a long background of disordered eating in the kind of binging context. And I made a commitment to myself a while ago, maybe four or five years ago, where I said, you know what, I'm still going to binge. I can't change the fact that now in my life with my wounding, with my history, with my family imprinting, I'm going to have bouts of binging and they're going to come up and I'm not going to deny them and I'm not going to hate on myself, but I'm going to make a commitment that if I feel like binging, if I can do it, I'm going to binge on fruit because there's so much easier to process and it's actually when you look at it incredibly difficult to overeat fruit because there's so much fiber there's so much water that the system instantly tells you like i cannot take any more watermelon and then you get melon belly and you can't really binge on fruit is the is the truth you can just enjoy and obviously a lot of the binging is to do with the attitude with which you're eating and how present you are it's not just the case of what you eat it's a more complex system but just Things like this, just always choosing to align back to nature because the, the nature around us is incredibly perfect. And it's a reflection of our consciousness. We've created this nature with our consciousness because our own consciousness is so perfect. And the more we align to nature, the more we align to our consciousness. The two are kind of direct mirrors of each other. So the more we operate and live according to nature's rhythms, according to the cycles of what's happening around us, and the more present we are to that, the more connected we are, the less healing really needs to take place because you naturally come into alignment and you don't need to think about what to eat or how much to eat. Like the cow doesn't think, have I eaten enough grass for breakfast? I wonder if I've had enough protein. I maybe should eat another few square centimeters. It's like the cow just knows when to stop and doesn't question these basic things. But we've made this whole uh, you know, very erotic thing with food. We're kind of very, it's like, so sexy and so powerful and so much ego is attached to it and really it's just nourishment it's not anything more at the end of the day and it's just learning to see how in nature people beings are nourishing beings are being born beings are dying and observing things like okay there is a cycle of birth and death and one day i will die and this body is temporary and it's a gift and i only have it for so long and i can have it for this long and I can enjoy my time in this body or I can sabotage my time in this body and have a, an obstructed body and a difficult life and really at the end of it all it all life is it's just a series of choices that we make 
And every single moment we can choose the fruit over the mucus forming food or the love over the fear or forgiveness over anger or presence over suppression. And any moment and every moment we, we choose our destiny and we choose our lives and we choose the bodies that we live in. We choose them through our choices. And really the question of what is self-love? Self-love is any act that we do that we know is in service of the greater not just myself and my future self and my children's self you know the whole greater everyone i meet everyone i my impact even just briefly with my energy if i work on myself the collective feels it we are one consciousness and then it becomes like the journey and the path becomes an act of service and when the times are really rough and when the times are just oh, i can't do this bringing that dimension i'm not just doing this for me I'm doing it for the whole collective and what I'm purifying and purging through my system now, everyone will feel it. There'll be a lightness, not just in my step, but in everyone who, who sees my smile the next day or who, who receives some of my own light that has come through me. And then we become vessels for the divine and everything is divine. So the more present we are to what is, the more we express this authentic divinity within us the more everyone around us gets activated. And then eventually it will just reach a critical mass, like pa, 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 pa. there will be a tipping point and a huge shift in consciousness will take place. And we're just on the edge of that now. And it's this really beautiful, juicy tension where you know things are really shifting and everything's changing, but a beautiful breakthrough will happen and a beautiful release and a clearing and a flooding will take place. And it's really exciting times that we're in and what a blessing to be able to have had these eye-opening experiences and to have a forum where we can share with others and that there are so many beings out there who are super curious about this lifestyle and who, who know that there's more than meets the eye, that there's more than we're being told and spoon fed by the media and they, they, their bodies are beginning to speak to them. Right? People are beginning to understand like there's wisdom in this body of mine and what a blessing you know i'm not going to speak for you ladies but just for me what a blessing to be able to embody this and share it and it really is my life's passion so thank you sarah for creating the format where we can talk about this really grateful thank you everyone no oh, there goes my hot water bottle thank you everyone for being here Love you all so much and I'm sure we have a lot more to offer and I'm sure of it when we all, you know, but we're, we're all co-creating numerous things and community is a big, a big intention of ours and Alex and Jody are currently in Bali setting that up and just kind of getting things together and Alice is in Copenhagen, so these are my two favorite places in the world, and I'm very envious, but Australia is also a beautiful place to be. Oh, there goes Alex. Um, so we will be sharing a lot more, and um, and yeah, so if you want to get in touch with any of these ladies, there's some links below. Jodie's offering a free detox group in the month of July, right? Yeah. Yeah, so she's doing a, a little detox group. So find Jodi on Facebook to find out about that. Alice has got an amazing group called Fasting with Alice, which is a free Facebook group. Loads of information, loads of videos. You can get in contact with her on her Instagram. She's got a fantastic Instagram feed. Alex does incredible coaching and she's got a members um, Facebook group, which I highly recommend. Loads of videos, loads of Kundalini yoga in there. Um, so definitely go check that out. And you can also check out her coaching services. They're incredible. And then for me, if you are a woman with hormonal imbalance or PCOS or infertility, I've got the intuitive healing program. And I've just launched the intuitive detox program, which is just everything that we've just spoken about. Cellular detoxification, unraveling this beautiful body, this mind. It's, it's really just purification of the mental body, emotional body, and the physical body. So you can go check that out. That's linked below. And uh, we look forward to coming back and probably doing a part three at some point. Um, and if you have any questions or any topics you want answered, then just leave a comment below and we'll be, we'll be sure to consider it. And um, yeah, love to everyone.